hi, this is Herling with Travel Trail Sail. Judy and I are out walking today in one of our favorite places, Colonial Williamsburg in Virginia. We're going to give you a little walking tour, cover some of the special places and, and why we think this is a great place to visit that you'll be sure to want to visit soon. So come along, join us on our walk through Colonial Williamsburg. The Capitol is on one end of Duke of Gloucester Street. While the original burned down, this is a beautiful reconstruction from 1934. Williamsburg actually was the capital of Virginia for about 80 years until the uh, Revolutionary War, and then the capital moved to Richmond, Virginia. So just imagine these are streets that Thomas Jefferson and George Washington and James Madison once walked. George Washington actually had his favorite restaurant in Williamsburg. He'd come and eat here often, and Thomas Jefferson uh, was a violinist when he was going to school here at the College of William and Mary, he'd actually get invited to the governor's palace to play in a string quartet. So as you're walking through, think about the historic figures of the United States and you're walking in their same footsteps. You can eat in the same restaurants and uh, it's pretty amazing that uh, this Colonial Williamsburg exists the way it does now. Yeah, and it's such a charming area. As you can see, it's all pedestrian traffic. So it's really nice, plenty of room for people to walk. You'll see people jogging, riding their bikes. Great place to bring your dog for a walk. Oh yeah, our little Rita. Well, she's really not that little. She's 65 pounds little, but <laughs> she loves coming here. It's a gorgeous day. Looks like they repaved the middle. Now, the way that this street is laid out, there are a paved, uh, you know, with pavers and, and rocks, sidewalks that are nice wide sidewalks. But down the middle of the street, uh, it's been recently repaved. And typically uh, on a busy summer day, you'll see horse-drawn carriages uh, coming through. So... Uh, beware. Yeah, beware where you, where you step. <laughs> but it is nice that it's a nice wide path. And the street, this is Duke of Gloucester Street uh, in Williamsburg. This will continue all the way through the colonial historic area, but then actually goes on into a more modern shopping area as well. And just past that is the College of William & Mary, which I believe is the second oldest college in America. I think you're right. So it's very close by. Thomas Jefferson studied there. It's a great school. Very, very charming also. Just walking around the campus there is very nice. 
So the area we're walking through here, there's actually several, they call them taverns, but they're historic restaurants. And you can actually come and grab a bite to eat by candlelight. Sometimes you'll have a violinist come through and, and play a little song for you while you're dining. Uh, everyone's in costume and, and tries to be as authentic to the period as they can. Yeah, and you can buy a ticket to enter many of these buildings and learn the different crafts back then at, during the colonial period, such as a blacksmith or a musket, how to make a musket, all kinds of things. Uh, but those do require tickets. Um, but to stroll around, absolutely free, which is always nice. <laughs> absolutely. So a ticket generally runs $40 for an adult, about 40 They have a new system that they've put in place this year, which is an electronic ticket. So it's contactless, which is really nice. Uh, and so it's about $40, but sometimes you'll see specials. Right now, in fact, I think they're running a special where you can buy a ticket for half price. Oh, that's awesome. Well worth it. So that gets you access to see all the people demonstrating a blacksmith or a musket maker or um, many other different colonial era, era skills. And as Erling said, we're walking down the main street, Duke of Gloucester Street, but there are lots of side streets that have even more to see. Um, but we are just gonna hit the main, main street today, the main area. Judy mentioned you can actually just walk through here without a ticket, which is true. Uh, there is some free parking available. It's two hour parking. So if you want to just come for a stroll and kind of just check things out, uh, you can do that. If you're planning on staying for the whole day, you'll want to park over at the visitor center. They run a shuttle back and forth. So that way you don't have to worry about circling around looking for a parking spot. That's really nice. There's two drop-offs actually for the shuttle. One where we were at by the Capitol and then one at the midpoint between the colonial era uh, section and Merchant Square. This is just so pretty. So today is a beautiful day. Light breeze, probably low 70s. If you come visit Colonial Williamsburg uh, just know that in the summertime it can get pretty hot and humid so you'll want to be sure you stay hydrated wear sunscreen you know kind of pace yourself because you will be doing a lot of walking winter time probably gets you know maybe high 40s uh, so it's not bad uh, but you'll want to again maybe dress in layers we do walk here all year round it is a great place just to come for a stroll, like we said, bring the dog. Uh, and there's always something new to check out. Uh, I like coming on Saturday mornings in the summer when they have the farmer's market. I hope that resumes soon. Uh, I know it was closed down a little while because of the health concerns this year, but uh, the farmer's market is awesome. A lot of different merchants bringing in flowers and vegetables. Oh yeah, and locally raised uh, organic meat and uh, homemade pies that are amazing. It's oh, so the good. pies are <laughs> the pies are fantastic. Come come if nothing else just to buy a pie. I like coming in December. Uh, they have the Grand Illumination event. Uh, usually like I believe the first weekend in December where they do a colonial style celebration. Uh, for Christmas, it's a, it's really cool. And then all the buildings along this uh, Duke of Gloucester Street are decorated with homemade colonial style decorations. So you'd see wreaths made out of fruit and um, maybe magnolia leaves, things like that. It's just gorgeous. And if you come in uh, Christmas time, in Merchant Square, they'll do different things. They have entertainers that come. I've seen the world's smallest uh, theater where it's a little trailer and they come and perform Christmas Carol, which is really fun. Also in the summer, they'll have something called First Sundays, variety of different entertainment. 
second Sunday? Second Sunday. Yeah, in the summer they have second Sunday. You might find an Irish dance group or a band. Different craft, crafts and things. Now, close to Williamsburg, there's a lot to do too. There's Bush Gardens, which is a wonderful amusement park. Rides for all ages. It's a gorgeous amusement park. The landscapes is amazing. It's been um, voted America's most beautiful theme park every yes. year. Yes, indeed, and I, it, it, well worth it. They work hard on their landscape. There's also Water Country, a water park. If you need to take a break from the heat of Virginia, that's a great place to do it. Or you'd like to spend a day at the beach. Virginia Beach is also very close within driving distance. And many museums close by. You have uh, the Living Museum and Newport News, uh, Jamestown Settlement, Yorktown, lots to see. Let's come and take a look over here. This is called the Magazine, okay. and I think it's an interesting thing to check out. Let's do it. The magazine was built in 1715. It served as the armory where the community stored all its muskets and other arms. If you get the backstage tour, you can actually see many of those items on display. During the summer, you'll often see a really neat gift shop set up next to the magazine. Well, we're continuing our walk down the middle part of Duke of Gloucester Street in Colonial Williamsburg. One of the things we wanted to try here but haven't yet is a ghost tour. You know, in the evenings you can take a ghost tour and walk through and hear all the stories of Colonial Williamsburg and maybe a little spooky, but I've seen a lot of families do it, so it must not be too scary. Yeah, in the evening is a great time to walk down to Gloucester Street. Uh, yeah, and those, I've seen the ghost tours and we actually went on one in Wilmington. It was a lot of fun. It was, and it's very family family friendly. So they've done a lot of improvements. You might see some trucks coming through here. They've been actually repaving some of the sidewalks, the whole main part of this road. So normally this is a car-free zone. Uh, it's just for walking and, and carriage traffic. But today you might see a truck and a tractor as they try and finish up. They're gonna be reopening the Colonial section tomorrow which is kind of exciting. Uh, all the interpreters will be back and some of the buildings back open again. Yeah, that's great. So typically you wouldn't see cars here, but they probably doing some last minute preparations, which is awesome. Coming up soon here, we're gonna see Bruton Parish Church. And once we get past this tractor, I'll tell you a little bit about it. So we're standing here right at the intersection of Palace Green and the Bruton Parish Church is here. It's the, it was the church in Colonial Williamsburg and believe it or not it still continues to have Sunday services and sometimes services on other nights as well. They do choir concerts, organ concerts and really keep the congregation alive and having the church at the, the center of the community. From here we're going to continue down I'm just going to pan over a little bit and you will see the, the governor's palace. In front of it is Palace Green, a huge green space. And the idea here was to show just how important the governor was as the seat of power in, in the colonial Williamsburg era. So we're going to start walking towards that. It's a really beautiful and historic building. And we'll take a closer look. We're just going to walk up alongside Palace Green here, take a closer look at the Governor's Palace. And again, the Governor's Palace, uh, it was an elaborate building, prob probably a bit over budget. The Governor at the time that was building it out wanted to have all of the amenities possible to really show how powerful he was in terms of government. Uh, but it's a kind of a place that uh, 
They would have dances and balls. You can imagine George Washington maybe being invited to a ball here. Thomas Jefferson playing in a quartet to provide music. Yeah, we'll walk up towards it. How would you like to have this yard to mow every day? Oh, wow. Or I should say every week. <laughs> I think I'd pass on that. <laughs> Maybe back in the day they had sheep. Yeah. <laughs> actually, if you go on some of the side streets just off of here, uh, you can actually find horses, sheep, and other farm animals still here in the colonial area because that's when it was a colonial, colonial community, they would have had their animals kept in town. So we're walking along over to the right, there's actually a theater. It was the first, I think, the first theater in America. It was built to British standards and uh, they put on plays and other kinds of acts. It was really quite the place in the time and even uh, after the revolution, they continued to be a theater where uh, William and Mary students would put on shows. The building is no longer there, but they do still have an open air theater that sometimes you'll catch an act. Here in uh, Colonial Williamsburg in the Merchant Square area, there is an indoor theater, gimbal theater, and have all kinds of different shows there. So that's something to check out too. It's a pretty neat theater inside. So we made it to the Governor's Palace, quite a place. I think I mentioned earlier in December they have a celebration called Grand Illumination where they have all kinds of events, activities celebrating the Christmas season and at night they will light fireworks from behind the Christmas Palace and that palace green that we just walked through will be just packed with people but it is really really a fun time. If you want to see a, a, what a colonial Christmas would have been like, this is the place to see it. As you walk around Williamsburg, be sure to check out the gardens. There are really neat colonial gardens next to some of the houses and behind others. Check out all the flowers and plants that they're growing. If you get the backstage pass, you'll actually be able to go into the gardens Otherwise, you can just walk on the sidewalk and take a look in.
As we're walking along, you, you'll know that actually a lot of the buildings are open, but some of these are actually private residences. People live in Colonial Williamsburg, and there are signs, there'll be a sign on the outside of the house indicating that you aren't able to go into those homes. But could you imagine living in one of these several hundred year old homes in this historic area? That would be amazing. Here's one of the areas where uh, you'll often see a pasture here with horse or sheep grazing on it. Yep, no animals out today. of the main colonial area and kind of heading towards the Merchant Square area where we have all kinds of shops and restaurants and when they have the farmers market that's where they set up all the different booths um, so you know it's really nice just to come here for a nice dinner and then take a little stroll down Duke of Gloucester Street. Makes for a nice evening. There's restaurants for all different tastes and price points. You could have breakfast at Aromas. They make really good breakfast and coffee. You could come for a sandwich at lunch at the cheese shop. Or if you're looking for some really fine dining, there's the Fat Canary or a few other options as well. So, you know, you have anything from a really fancy anniversary type dinner down to just having a sandwich at the cheese shop. I absolutely love the cheese shop. It's in the Fat Canary. It's actually owned by the same family. So it's a locally owned, owned businesses. Uh, they have been around for a long time. The cheese shop has, if you're looking for a special wine or cheese, our sauces. It's a amazing kind of little gourmet place. It has a grocery store as part of it as well as the deli. And in the deli they make a house sauce. I don't know what it is but I love it. <laughs> and my favorite sandwich to get there is the turkey and country ham with provolone cheese on their French bread with their house made sauce. So good. Yum. <laughs> So we're approaching Henry Street. Henry Street is the dividing street between the Colonial section and Merchant Square. Barnes & Noble, the William & Mary bookstore, kind of comes over into the Colonial area, but all the rest of the stores are in the Merchant Square area. Looks like we have a lot of tables set up for outside dining up here, which is something we haven't seen before, but a lot of the restaurants are doing more outside dining these days. Beautifully landscaped area, nice shops. Where's that jewelry shop again? <laughs> <laughs> I would say if you're going to eat at the Fat Canary to get reservations early. If you know you want to go there on a specific date, try and get reservations because they do fill up fast. And it is a, there's my cheese shop. And next door is the Fat Canary. And next to that is the Wyth's Gourmet Candy Shop, which is fantastic. Great selection of all kinds of candies, either individually or the kind that are pre-packaged cookies, candies. Love going to the candy store. So, I'm gonna take a, a, a U-turn here for a second. Hang on. So this section here. We got the candy store there with candy next to the cheese shop, Fat Canary. This is the yummy, yummy, yummy section. So, yeah, with the Fat Canary, be sure to make reservations. Excellent gourmet food. Oh my gosh, so good. And it's seasonal food, so the menu changes. I think I'll never forget the creme brulee shake I had there. Oh, yum. So good. And there's a few clothing stores, 
men's fine suits and things and women's clothing. And recently, I think it was earlier this year, an Illy coffee shop opened up. And if you don't know Illy coffee, that is good stuff. Here's the Kimball Theater we mentioned. You know, and if you keep walking straight, as I mentioned earlier, College of William and Mary is right across the street. It would be great to go to that college and just have this right in your back door, essentially. That would be pretty awesome. So that is Duke of Gloucester Street. We walked from one end to the other, all the way from the Capitol Building down to the College of William & Mary. I hope you enjoyed our walking tour of Colonial Williamsburg. Again, this is a great place to visit year-round whether it's in the summertime and you enjoy the farmer's market as a bonus or Christmas time for grand illumination. It's a great place to come visit year round, learn some history about this great country. There's also plenty to do nearby, whether you want to see an amusement park, uh, such as Bush Gardens or Water Park, uh, which is water country, or visit numerous museums that are close by or enjoy a day at the beach at Virginia Beach. It's a great destination for you and your family. I highly recommend it. So, hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please check us out on TravelTrailSale.com and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks, and see you again.